What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I gotta say that these Vicrez side splitters are starting to grow on me. Although there's a few things that I would do differently if I were to make them myself. Some people have told me that these side splitters don't look good on these cars unless they're slammed. So, we're gonna do it. So I got a package from Z1 in today. I have not yet seen on a Q50. So I am excited to unbox this one. I've never seen a Q50 with this upgrade and I have not seen it available on the Z1 website until, uh, well, a couple of days ago. And I just went ahead and purchased it right away because just had to. So stick around for that one first, though I need to check the catch can on my wife's Explorer. No, I installed. Oh, I forgot. There's no hood. Oof, look at them leaves. As you guys know, that we installed this JLT catch can a while ago, if you've been following along. And I haven't checked it. It's been, it's been a couple of months. I like the location of this catch can, though. Easily accessible. Just a little tiny bit of residue. Well, that's good to see. Uh, at least it's working. It is catching. Like it's supposed to. Again, it's probably been, let's say, three months. Maybe 3,000 miles, something like that. Huh, good. Okay. I do have to give myself a little bit more room in this garage. So I guess no better time than now for a cold start. Well, you have everything opened up it's a good idea just to check everything the condition of everything make sure bolts and things of that nature are tight I'm gonna just check the uh, mounting hardware for the brake calipers clean up the calipers a little bit rotors look good just looking at them check the brake lines you know check all the stuff underneath the car there you can see the sole function lateral brace that's cool um, probably gonna clean the barrels of the wheels while they're off uh, but we're obviously dealing with the BC racing coil over at this point and our BC tools, spanner wrenches, and our, uh, where's my tape measure? Right here. Because we're going to move this lock ring, this bottom one here. Um, we're going to go up maybe, I'm so nervous. Just have to loosen that bottom one up and raise it up as far as you want it to drop. So where we'd measure is from this bottom lip of this lock ring to the bottom cylinder of the coilover and that's going to be the amount of drop because you're going to screw this whole assembly down into this tube so this measurement here is going to be the amount of drop that we see that's far Went ahead and did the rears because the process is painful. Uh, also, a good time to check out the condition of your tires. Rears are actually perfect money.
but I got to get this other side done because obviously that passenger, or sorry, the driver side being higher than the passenger side, it throws everything off so we don't get an actual look uh, from that side. So I'm going to get this other side done. No need to bore you with that uh, process. I'm back it out of the garage and see how this thing looks. <laughs> it looks good. Cool, this emblem looks, you never get to see it when you're actually driving the car. Oh well, guys, this thing is sitting pretty low, but it's time to get it out of the garage and take a look at what it looks like. Oh, bumped. I, I mean, it looks good. It looks good. But I gotta get this thing on the road. Take a closer look at it. I, I don't know. This might have been a mistake. <laughs> of course because we stiffened it up a couple of notches I expected that but I don't hear any rubbing I think it looks good I'm taking you to a place where we can actually take a look at it but it looks real good I guess my regret only regret is that I didn't go lower I'm trying to take these corners a little bit tighter to see if I can feel any binding or anything I don't I didn't feel anything coming out of the garage or coming out of the driveway, except I did scrape the front backing out. So we'll see what it's like going in. I didn't ever scrape before and I backed out the same way I always do. So we may just have to figure out how to adjust the angle. And I, only, I say my only regret is that I didn't go low enough because I don't want to take the wheels off and do this again. It's so annoying. What do you think? It's not that low. Okay, I didn't, it not totally slam, but it's definitely lower. I mean, you can see the front wheels here. Did not ever encapsulate the whole, you know, top portion of the tire. So it's, it's pretty low in the front, much lower than I've ever had it. I mean, just look at how low the splitter is. Uh, the front, the rear tires almost tucked into the wheel well, into the fender well but not, not super, super low. So that's why I said my one regret is that, I, that it, I didn't go lower because it actually doesn't drive too bad and I wasn't scraping on anything driving on the, God, it looks sexy as hell though. I don't know, I, I, I think I like this height. Um, man, it's, it's low. The only thing is I feel like it's gonna rub here uh, and there's some evidence of rubber there. So it, it's rubbed, I don't know how though, or where, is there evidence? I don't really see evidence on the tire necessarily, but it's definitely getting some residue, rubber residue of some kind. Maybe it's, maybe it's from the, from the uh, tire dressing. It definitely seems like rubber to me. So it rubbed somewhere. The rear, I think clears. Oh my God, it is tight though. I can't get hardly get my fingertip in. But I think when it, this, the natural geometry of it, when it goes up, it tucks into the wheel well. So that's cool. Uh, I know I said I was gonna slam it to take a look at this, how the splitter looks, but I don't think I can go any more slammed than this, honestly. It's, it's all the lower I wanna go with it, but I think I'm gonna leave it like this because it looks it looks money it looks perfect the problem is the front has a ton of negative camber now can you see that I don't know if it's light enough for you to see uh, and I wish I could get a spacer 
use a spacer and pull this out a little bit, but then I really think we're gonna be rubbing. So, I don't know, it's sort of a, a double-edged sword. It's like, it looks great, but we can't push it out, the wheel out anymore, so I can't get it super flush like it was before. I don't know, we're, we're, we're between a rock and a hard place, as they say. It, it looks so good. I got no complaints there. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. This car is looking, this car is looking so good right now. This is the longest I think it's ever stayed clean, to be quite honest. I don't know guys, that splitter is growing on me. Man, it's good. Well, we're in one of those tough situations where the car looks good, but we may have a little bit of rubbing in the front. Nothing that I could hear, so it's nothing major and it's not leaving any evidence on the tire, so it must not be that bad. Then the only problem is the front wheels aren't as flush as they were before, and I like the flush look, but I don't have the ability really to run a spacer because the spacer is going to push that tire out even further, and then I'm going to rub. And even if I had adjustable control arms, which I would recommend, and see now I don't know if my turning sharp out of that driveway at an angle, I almost felt like something was binding up a little bit, the rear axles. That's why I actually raised the car before. I had it almost to this this level before, um, but I felt like going around hard corners that my rear axles in particular were sort of were sort of binding up, like they're too much at an angle like that. But maybe it's just tire spin. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just traction control kicking in. I don't know. But I wanted to see it lower. So that's my regret, and I apologize for to you guys that. I didn't get a little bit more aggressive, but I started separating. I started, you know, putting the gap in those uh, coilovers, and I'm like, uh, an inch. Should I go further than that? Uh, I don't know. Do I want to do that. And I chickened out. I chickened out. Uh, it didn't, nothing, nothing, nothing binding there on that corner. So I wanted to get more aggressive, but <laughs> there's only. I don't know. I just wasn't quite willing to drop it a little bit lower. Maybe we have to now. I don't know. I, I wish I would have just for this video, but also didn't want to screw anything up, obviously. My driveway at work, my, my the driveway to my office is obnoxious. And that road is so busy and people are so crazy. Um, I have to take it right into the office building and, and they just roll up on you so fast. So I don't want to hit that driveway too fast and rip my front splitter off or, you know, scuff the sole function braces or anything like that. So, you know, I, I wanted to slam it for YouTube, but I also want to be practical about it too because I'm going to drive the car like this now. The car fuels really nimble. It really did with the, you know, once I added the control, uh, the uh, BC coilovers anyway, but just dropping the car another almost an inch or so and, and stiffening up the front end a little bit. It just, it feels so tight. And I would like blue brake pads on there instead of these. So if you guys could please get him to add those on for me. Here we go now, pulling into the driveway. Let's see if I can get the proper angle. We'll see. baby Did scare you? nope did you see the front scrape yep so what I generally like in cars is a little bit of rake anyway so the, the rear just slightly higher than the front uh, I don't like the rear tire to tuck into the wheel well but the front I don't mind I don't mind 
having a little bit of the top part of the tire hidden in the wheel well i think that looks cool it looks aggressive uh, but it gives this the car sort of a little bit of rake which i think is an aggressive stance so i like that it's, it's perfect it's actually the car is actually sitting perfect for me right now perfectly level with the top of the rear tire and just a small portion like the tread portion of the front tire tucked up i think that's the ideal stance for this car uh, every car is a little bit different but for the q50 i think this is i think this is a money stance to me um, the reason I wanted to just touch back touch on this again the reason I said I didn't stiffen the rear end anymore the rear coilovers anymore was because any stiffer it tends to bounce I don't mean the springs I don't mean the coilovers bounce I mean the whole rear end of the car bounces because there's no weight in the rear and if you have passengers in the back it's not so bad but you know in my case I'm, I'm driving alone or usually with one passenger I don't have people in the back seat ever um, so all the weight is in the front so if you hit a bump the rear suspension being so stiff the whole rear end bounces so you lose traction a lot easier a lot faster uh, smaller bumps cause you to lose traction and that's not good especially in, you know in everyday driving situations but it's really not good if you're in a competitive driving or spirited driving situation where you know you're taking tight corners or you're accelerating out of, out of a curve and you hit a small bump that causes your whole rear end to get a little bit light that's going to cause you to kick out it's going to cause you to lose traction ultimately your times are going to be slower uh, but more importantly uh, it's going to potentially cause you to lose control of your vehicle and that's obviously no good so uh, I wanted it to be a little bit softer in the rear to absorb some of those bumps, uh, but to still be firm enough to where you can take corners aggressively and you don't you, you don't get any of that body roll still. So uh, I think where I'm at with the minus three, so or sorry, minus 13, 13 notches back from the stiffest for the rear is perfect. And actually the car rode really, really well uh, with uh, being you know, just five or six notches back from the stiffest in the front. Uh, but again, those tires are really tucked up in there and the front end is really heavy. So if you have it any softer than this, you risk uh, rubbing more. You risk those tires being pushed up further, uh, potentially scrubbing in certain areas uh, and also scrubbing the front end on bumps and, and driveways and things like that if it's too soft. So I think, I think we're perfect in the settings. I think I need to write it down in my book so I can remember where we're at and just kind of take note of how the car handles in this situation. Uh, and then that's what we're gonna to use to make adjustments going to the mountains in the next, hopefully in the next few weeks. To all you guys that say splitters don't look good on the Q50 unless it's slammed, it's nonsense. Make sure you guys, make sure you guys take a look at the watch before you buy the Vic Res side splitters for the Q50. They're growing on me a little bit, but there's still some things that I would change about them and some things that disappointed me a little bit about these splitters. So check out that video if you haven't already. I think it's going to be posted before this one, but I uh, hope you guys like how the car looks in the stance because this is how she's going to be sitting for a little bit longer. I do wish that I went just a little bit lower, to be quite honest, but I think it looks good. I hope you guys think it looks good too. Let me know in the comment section below if I should go lower or if I should bring it back up to the right height I was at before. I always appreciate your feedback. Whether or not I follow it is up in the air, but I appreciate the engagement with these videos nonetheless. So thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support. We're at 16,100 and something subscribers at this point. So onward and upward for the channel. Onward and upward for you guys. I hope everything is going well in the crazy world that we're living in today. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.